second samuel chapter 6 i'm reading 9 to 11 david was afraid of the lord that day and he said how can the ark of the lord come to me now uh, you you know I, I preached a message a few weeks ago last month i can't remember about carriers of the ark they matters who carries the ark and say, if you follow on from that, everybody became very scared of the ark. And even David was so afraid of the ark of God because it was as if the ark was just wreaking havoc everywhere. And so David, David was afraid of the Lord that day and he said, how can the ark of the Lord come to me? So David would not move the ark of the Lord within to the city of David. But David took it aside into the house of Obed-Edom the Gittite. The ark of the Lord remained in the house of Obed-Edom, the Gittite, three months. And the Lord blessed Obed-Edom and his household. Let me say it again. It matters who carries the ark. It matters. The ark can produce result for someone, not produce result for other people. Because some people carried the ark and they thought it was the ark that was the power, but not the God behind the ark. Listen to this. The ark is just figurative. It's the presence and the power of God that matters. It matters who is praying. Because it's not the prayer that matters. It's the God that answers prayer. And that's why I would say it's, it's the God that answers prayer. And unto him shall all flesh come. It's not, it's not just the giving that matters. It matters the art of the giver, for God loves a cheerful giver. Uh, you see, it's not just to serve God that matters, um, but the art of the service person is important. And so the Bible says that serve the Lord with gladness. You see, whatever you do with God, the heart matters a lot. Uh, and so you can't just come to God and dump anything at his feet and say, since he wants it, I'm going to give it anyway. You know, I'm just going to give him my time. I'm just going to, no, 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 no. The art matters. Because the blessing is not just in the physicality of what you do. The blessing is in the heart that it's doing it. Very, very, very important. So God sees the heart. Everybody say amen. amen. Say God sees the heart. God sees what's going on in my heart. Now, verse 12. It was told King David. This is where we're going. It was told King David saying, the Lord has blessed. The house of Obed-Hedom and all that belongs to him because of the ark of God. The same ark that destroyed the Philistines. The same ark that people were afraid of. So David went and brought up the ark of God from the house of Obed-Hedom to the city of David. How? With gladness. And David brought the ark of God with gladness. The ark matters. The ark matters. He brought the ark with gladness. The ark matters. Your ark matters in everything you do. Please, if you can't get your ark into it, don't even go there. And that's why the Bible talks about the kings and it's talking about people who serve the Lord without their heart. And those who serve the Lord with the all of their heart. You wonder why God loves David so much. He wasn't the best of all human beings on earth, but he has a good heart. The Bible said David is a man after God's heart. He seeks after God. And that's why we write things like, seek my soul, he says to me. My heart reply, your face I'll seek. David didn't say, seek my soul, he says to me. My mouth reply, your face I seek. No, David said, seek my soul, he says to me. My heart reply, your face, O Lord, I will seek. Your heart matters. My heart matters. If you are in a place without your heart, you're wasting your time. If you're in a marriage without your heart, you are wasting your time. Because there are people in relationships that is just their physical body that is there, but their heart is not there. You can't get the best from any relationship if your heart is not with it. And people wonder sometimes why they have a lot of marital problems, but your heart is not even there. It's just a contract on a piece of paper. You're just doing it because you don't want anybody to talk. You're just still married because you can't go through the pain of divorce and the shame of it, you think. But it's worse off because the heart is not there. Especially when we serve God, it needs and it requires our heart. So David brought the ark with gladness of heart. 
And so it was when those bearing the ark of the Lord had gone six paces that is sacrificed. Somebody say sacrifice. Sacrifice. That is sacrificed. There are dimensions of walking with God that it's impossible if you're not ready to sacrifice. Oh, we may not talk about it every day in church, but I want to tell you the truth. There are dimensions of God that you can't get into without sacrifice. But somebody say, but Jesus paid it all, especially for Christians. That's why we are empowered to walk like him. Paul said, the grace of God upon my life is not in vain, but I labor more than them. Sacrifice. Sacrifice. How many times was he beaten and imprisoned? Sacrifice. We, 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 li, li, listen to this. The Bible says it has given to you not only to believe in Christ, but to suffer for his grace. In Philippians, I think it's 129. Now listen carefully to this. God requires sacrifice from you and from me. And if everything about my Christianity is the one that is comfortable, there is still a lot of space ahead of you. God likes you. You're still blessed. You're not cursed. But there's still so much you can do for God if you know that your present life and service to God, is the, it, there's no sacrifice in it. You know, I know some of us, it's a, it's a major sacrifice for you to be in church today because it's cold. Say amen. amen. Some of you would like to just be under the duvet. Keep on sleeping. But thank God that you were delivered from under the duvet and you came to church. It's a sacrifice to serve the Lord. It's a sacrifice. So David brought the ark with gladness and sacrificed. He brought the ark with gladness and sacrificed. Oxen and fatted sheep. He sacrificed oxen and fatted sheep. Not lean sheep. Not, I don't know if you heard this word before. Not stingo sheep. Have you heard it before? <laughs> not thin one. <laughs> Fatted, blessed, big sheep. Then David, this is where we're going. Then David danced before the Lord. Some people want to dance before their Lord. Their heart is not there. They want to dance before the Lord. They've not sacrificed anything. Sacrifice first before you dance all the dance. It's easy for everybody to jump around. That's not the kind of dance I'm talking about today. It's easy for everybody to shout, Jesus is am I? No, no, no. I mean, I mean, do it after. Your heart, it's given to God. Do it after your means are given to God. Do it after your heart is given to God and you have sacrificed. I'm talking about that kind of dance. The dance that David danced, he danced after his heart was captured for God. He danced after his sacrifice for God. And this is not just some, some random, random show of skill that I can dance. This isn't that. It's more than that. He brought the act with gladness. That was gladness. Anybody here excited that God saved you? Excitement. He brought the act with gladness of heart. It, it wasn't fake. It wasn't made up. It was genuine gladness of heart. It, it, the heart of David was God. And he made sacrifices, oxen and sheep. And then David danced. Before the Lord with all his might. And David was wearing a linen effort. If some of us have that kind of cloth, we won't dance. You wonder why the Bible has to tell you what he was wearing. I'll tell you another day. He was dressed in a princely, kingly garment. He was fully decked with the best that you could get. And it was even an effort. That's not just a prince, a, a king garment. Anybody understand Bible? He fought. He was fully dressed. He was dressed well. 
But when it comes to God, whatever you are dressed with comes as nothing. You know, these days we are very, very careful and well structured that we don't even get carried away in the presence of God. We're very structured, you know, very structured, very planned. We don't get carried away. It's really when you have things like evil COVID that structures life. You can't shake, you can't talk, you have to behave as if you're a masquerade. You know all of those things that we have to do. You and I, all of us. And then our life becomes so structured and so planned that there is no even room for the expression of the Holy Spirit. And then we get used to it. And so even when on your own, you can't even scream. You can't shout. You can't do anything, even when there are, there are no restrictions. But the Bible says David danced before the Lord. Not before the people. Not before the ark. But before the Lord of the ark. If he danced before the Lord with all his might. So David and all the house of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord with shouting. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. They brought it with shouting and with the sound of the trumpet. Today, my message is simple. You have to learn to dance like David danced. This one we've been talking about jubilation. Jubilation, when I mention jubilation, I know the first thing that comes to your mind is jubilee, but I'm not going into all that exegesis. Well, you see, I'm just talking about jubilation as in celebration. When you hear the word jubilation, you know you're talking about excitement, but you know what we can learn from David? Jubilation is not complete without expression. You cannot be jubilant and be quiet. You can't. In fact, you can't. You, it's not. You cannot be jubilant and be quiet. You can be full of joy. That's different. When we talk about being jubilant, there's an expression. With anything you're expressing yourself with. You know, I always joke with the guys who play the guitar that thank God I don't know how to play it. My God. Because you know the way I will be playing well. Hey. <laughs> I even do it at the back. If you are leading here, you are at the back. I'm playing my head guitar. I'm telling you. May the Lord give me grace to play it. May I also be diligent to learn. Now some of you like that kind of prayer. Receive grace from today. Begin to play keyboard. You see him, man. You think God is not a God who believes in hard work. God is a magician who does not respect hard work. No, he does. Amen. Anybody here wants to learn how to play keyboard? You see, you won't put your hand up again. Now, people who have faith, just do it. Be ready to work hard. Praise God. Just by the way, some of these guys are ready to train you 25 pounds per hour. Amen. Please, nobody, don't let anybody come to you without my permission. <laughs> you know, these guys, they are too good. They just say, okay, uncle, don't worry. Let's just do it like that. No. Bite the truth and sell it not. Play keyboard is truth. <laughs> Amen. David danced. Gladness of heart and sacrifice. He danced with shouting. And then with the sound of instruments and trumpets. You don't need a trumpet. You can clap your hands. Your voice can be your trumpet. But there is no jubilation without expression. Let me say a few things before we be, go on to dance a bit. Jubilation is important. It's an expression that you genuinely know and accept the greatness of God. It's an expression. That's why, you know, it, it's an expression. It's an expression. It's like the, the similar word to it in the Bible is when it says rejoice in the Lord. Always, I say again, rejoice. In Philippians chapter 4, rejoice. You see, you, you see, that's why it's important. It's an expression. 
Do you know why the expression is important? Because God doesn't want his children to be sad and moody. God hates people who are moody. God doesn't want it. God doesn't want his children like that. That's why the principles of scripture clearly negates the power of anxiety and depression. And if a Christian struggles with any of those, you can cry out to God and stay on the word of God and say, this is not for me. Isaiah 61 verse 3, to console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for the spirit of mourning. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Is there anybody right now who feel heavy in your heart? You have the garment of praise. Listen to this. You're not going to have the garment of praise. You have the garment of praise. If you believe in Jesus and Jesus is your savior, that's why he came and he didn't do a half job. He completed the job. You have a garment of praise. A garment, glory to God. Not a vest, a garment. Not a t-shirt, a garment. <laughs> In other words, it's a full regalia. Look at some third person, do you know I have a garment of praise? <laughs> third person, if you can see it, you are blessed. <laughs> I have a garment of praise. Garment of praise. That they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. Hallelujah. I'll read a little bit more of Isaiah 61. Isaiah 61, 10 to 11. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. I will greatly. Let's say it together. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God. He has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. Who are you ready for this? As a bridegroom decks himself with ornaments. And as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. <laughs> Let me just cause trouble here a little bit. You know, that's why it amazes me when Christians say God doesn't like jewelries. God doesn't like it, but he uses it as example. That that's the way he blesses you. What, what, how, how, how does that work? You think God will use evil to do example? No, he doesn't do things like that. God is, doesn't have cognitive dissonance. It's in agreement with himself. But listen to this. For as the listen to this. For as the earth brings forth its bud, and as the green causes the things that are sown in it to spring forth, so the Lord will cause righteousness and praise to spring forth before all nations. And you know who are going to be the carriers of that praise? The Bible is talking about me. I will greatly rejoice. How many of you know this song? I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. See, that's how I know when you become born again. <laughs> you don't know all those kind of spiritual songs. <laughs> you only know, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God. Anybody here want to say that? I will greatly rejoice. I will greatly rejoice. Regardless of what is happening, I will greatly rejoice. The word there is will. It's a choice I have made. No waiting for things to fall in line. It's a choice I have made. I will greatly rejoice. I can scream and shout and laugh anytime, regardless of what is happening around me, because He has crowned me with His righteousness. I will greatly rejoice. You have every reason to rejoice. Let's look at this dance of David. Just one or two things about it. 
It takes a lot of humility to dance like that. There's a level of expression of service to God that if you are not humble, you won't do it. Some people just to tell their colleagues that they are Christians, they can't. They can't. They won't. They will not. People don't even know you're born again. It takes a lot of humility and self-denial to dance the way David danced. Come on, king. That was why the wife looked at him and said, you are a disgrace, King David. He said, you dance like a commoner. She said, look at you, David. You call yourself a king, you are di- dancing like this? With all this dressing, with all this title, with all of this throne, you dance like an idiot. You dance like the commoners. She was right. Just that she didn't know that not before God. She was right in the calculations of men. But in the presence of God, let every other name fade away. It, it's a lot of humility. I don't want you to have that kind of a humble heart. We're back to the heart. Have that kind of a mind which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the very nation of God, consider it not robbery to be equal to God, uh, something that he should lay hold on and grasp, you know, he let it off. It takes a lot of self-denial, a lot of humility, a lot of loss of reputation for you to dance the way David danced. And for us, for some of us, this dance might mean many things in our life. This dance might mean a lot of expressions in our life. It might mean standing up to proclaim the name of the Lord. It might be standing up for the truth. It might be just letting people know that you are sold out to God. It takes a lot of self-denial to dance the way David danced. And that was why the wife couldn't understand why the guy was dancing like a commoner. David said, oh, God bless David. David said, I would rather be a doorkeeper where David preferred to be in the house of the Lord than be on the throne. Say, I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. One thing have I desired, David was happier in God's presence than on his throne. Until you are happier to be with God than your throne, you've not started. Until you are happier to be with God than to be on your throne. On your throne where all the titles are. On your throne where you command things around. On your throne. You know some husbands are on the throne. The throne of the husband. They don't come down from the throne. My God. They stretch their hand and flip through the TV. They can never wash a plate. They have a throne. They can't help nobody in the house. They have a throne. They only do what kings do in the home. You know the next thing I'm going to say to me is ludicrous because even Jesus Christ of Nazareth prepared barbecue for his disciples. O king, thou of a great throne, you need to let it go sometimes. Like Jesus. If Jesus had hogged his throne, you won't be here, I won't be here. And he had every right to do it. He chose to die for us. Anybody know that? The Bible said there was sound in heaven. Now, in Revelation, just quickly. The Bible said there was nobody that could open the book. All the elders, everybody just dodged. He said, but Jesus Christ has prevailed. He chose to do it. Can you choose to do what is right? Can I bury my reputations and be humble to serve the Lord? Can we leave all the arguments and fightings alone and just do what the Holy Spirit is instructing us to do? If God says, say hello to that sister, can you just say hello and forget about every other details of I am older. She should be greeting me first. Did she not see me? Evil. Let's leave our throne. Takes a lot of humility to dance like David danced. He shook off his reputation. He forgot that he was king. Not that he forgot that he was king. He allowed his kingship to step aside. 
To dance like David danced took a lot from David. But he did it anyway. You know why? Because David knew the God that he was serving. David understood that the relationship that he had with God was superior to every other thing in his life. David knew that without God, he wasn't going to have a lean any effort. David knew that without God, he wasn't going to have the throne. David knew without God, he wasn't going to be the king. David knew that everything he had, God gave. So it was easy for David to dance before the Lord and put all of those things aside. If you want to dance like David, that's why I like that song that says, let's forget about ourselves, concentrate on him and worship him. You have to learn to forget about yourself. You have to learn to put yourself aside. You can't be self-conscious and be God-conscious. You have to allow God to reign above your personality. You have to let that be more. I'm not saying be reckless. You don't know who you are. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying being God conscious. It's so important. And it changes the way we do everything we do. I'll be able to dance like David if I forget about myself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'll be able to shout and scream and praise the Lord and dance. I'm forgetting myself. Do you know to really even just dance, sometimes you need to forget yourself? You know people who are very conscious of who they are, they don't dance? Because they're thinking they're going to mess up? They're too conscious of themselves. They're, self, they, they, they're even critical of self. Oh, I'm going to mess up now. People will be looking at me. This, this, this. No, David danced. And you're going to dance. Amen. Amen. And there's no devil that will stop your dancing. Amen. And then, the last thing I want to say concerning this David dance was the fact that David was no longer afraid. If you live in fear, you will struggle to express yourself. David was no longer afraid. Oh my God, uh, uh, I feel this is like a full message on his own. When you are afraid of a thing, you lose your expression. If you are afraid of your husband, you lose expression. If you are afraid of your wife, you lose expression. If you are afraid of your children, you lose expression. If you are afraid of your parents, you lose expression. Parents, if your children are afraid of you, they lose expression in your presence. I need to add that to it because there will be somewhere that they wouldn't be afraid and they will express themselves. With fear, there's no expression. But when you overcome fear, you express yourself. Hallelujah. I don't know if you're in a relationship that is full of fear, you are delivered in Jesus' name so that you can express yourself. If you walk in an office and you're afraid of everything that is going on, you're caged. You can't express yourself. David, how? David, it was, it was going to be impossible for David to do all of these things if not that David was no longer afraid. When he was afraid, he sent the ark away. I don't want to have anything to do with this. Let everybody go home and be gentle and be quiet. This is a dangerous God. But when he overcame him, when he heard the good news, look at some tell the person, good news is coming your way right now. Amen. Tell the person throughout this year you will hear good news. Amen. The kind of good news that will cause you to be excited. Amen. The kind of good news that will cause you to rejoice. Amen. The kind of good news that will cause you to jubilate. The kind of good news that will cause you to shout. The kind of good news that will cause you to serve the Lord. You will hear the good news. The Bible said David heard the good news. That God is not to be feared. That God is to be honored. And God is to be respected. That the same God who destroyed the Philistines. The same God in the house of Abed-Edom was causing great blessing. When he heard that. Changes his perception. 
Fear was done away with. Reputation was done away with. Everything was gone. What do you pay attention to? What kind of news do you hear? They made us afraid by the things they're telling us, Nehemiah said. You see, you need to understand God that he wants you to be excited. Hallelujah. He wants you to rejoice and to be glad. And I want to prophesy that throughout this year, and even as you move into 2022, you will have reasons to jubilate. Yeah. You will have good news and good news and good news in the name of Jesus. Amen. Bad news will be far from you. Amen. You will hear a great report from afar. Amen. You will hear of the goodness and the mercy of the Lord. Amen. People will knock on your door to tell you great things. Amen. Your phone will ring for joy. Uh, I remember one day I said that in church that somebody's phone was going to ring for joy. And it actually happened. Now, maybe I should say it right now because it's heavy on my heart. Somebody's phone will ring for joy this year. I'm telling you something. Blessings you don't expect will come your way. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Blessings you're not working for, you're not praying for, will come your way in the name of Jesus. Um, things you have not thought about. Uh, as you begin to depend and trust the Lord, He will fight all of your battles. He will do for you what you cannot do for yourself. He will restore you and bless you and cause his face to shine upon you. 